Um, I, I think uh, I'm, I'm encouraged mainly. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it was an amazing moment there when you when you played back uh, the clip from uh, the closing plenary session from uh, Rena's uh, bringing the ship home comment, and, and that's been played a couple of times, and every time it it brings a kind of tear to my eye. And I think that that moment was, uh, as, as Mina just indicated, this is multilateralism in action. Um, but what it means for the ocean and the planet um, is, is a number of things. And I think from, from our perspective, that, that ability to put in place um, highly protected marine areas to really give the ocean some, uh, some resilience, the ability to, to adapt to climate change, the ability to adapt from all the pressures that are currently on, that the ocean is currently under. So, so many man-made pressures at the moment, uh, be that overfishing, uh, plastic pollution, mm. uh, the acidification, uh, the oxygenation of the ocean, and so on. So, so putting in place those protected areas is, is, is the key, is a key part of it. But there's, there's, a, there's a number of other parts of the treaty package that are really important as well. So um, the treaty also uh, provides for greater uh, emphasis on environmental impact assessments for new activities on the high seas. Um, and then importantly, this is a this is a global treaty, so that so that there's something in it for everybody, whether or not you are a coastal state, um, or the, no matter how developed or um, developing the state is, um, there's also the ability for uh, capacity building and technology transfer, marine technology transfer, um, so that we're going to have a stake in it for everybody. Um, that also means that we've got uh, a mechanism for sharing benefits um, from the exploitation of genetic resources. So there's, there's, there's lots in there for everybody. Um, and that, that's, that gives me hope that this is going to be a, a treaty that, that the whole world can, can get behind.